Hello Sciheads and welcome to my new tutorial. So I was working on a chill out track. But of course, after a while, I just had to go completely bloody mental. And this happened. So I thought today is a good opportunity to show you how to create this really intense psychedelic kind of sound. I'm of course talking about this sound and this sound we will do today. This really reminds me of some like full on psychedelic sounds and I think it's really great for side trends but as you can hear, it's obvious that it can fit some other styles as well. So yeah, this sound is made in Vital, and we will just grab our Vital. Come on. Yes, there it is, there it is. So we will leave this initial wave preset and we will go to Envelope. And we will lower the sustain, the decay a bit, I think, and release. Not entirely, but yeah, somewhere around here, I guess. So the main thing with this sound is happening here. So we are just going to get here and click on the, where is it? Phase Disperse. And this is like the basic thing that makes this sound sound really, really crazy. So let's hear it. Yeah, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new MIDI pattern. And it's not really a pattern. It's just a really long note um, on your root key. My root key is E. So I think this is it. And one octave down. OK. And I will add MIDI effect arpeggiator. Yes. And so what does the arpeggiator do? So yeah, I will put it on uh, 32 because this is basically a chill out track and the BPM is 80. But if you're doing some kind of side trend stuff like 145 and above, I think you should definitely uh, put the rate to 16 notes. And yes, so we have this. So the thing is, we need to automate some of the parameters here for starters. And the first parameter is the gate here, which will create some unique rhythmical patterns. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So we are going to put some LFO in here. Uh, sorry, LFO. So we have our LFO here and we'll put the wavetable to random. And we'll put the rate to 32 or if you're doing trends, 16. And we will map this LFO to gate here. So what will happen now? As you can hear, oh wait, let me just lower that down a bit. As you can hear, because of the opening and the closing of the gate, uh, you get really unique rhythmic patterns. And because our LFO is in random mode, you can go forever like that and it will always be kind of unique. Yeah, cool, cool. And what I'm going to do, I will duplicate this LFO because we also need another LFO with random waves and I will map it to, to, to let's configure this knob phase disperse all right so i will map it here and now we have something more brutal yeah but the point with all of these lfos and random stuff and automatization is it is almost always not a good idea to go from zero to 100 percent you know so for the gate i think it's enough that we go from zero to 62 and for this uh, maybe maybe even the same i don't know 
Okay, and maybe we will adjust the starting point to a bit more so it doesn't get that much of... <laughs> so the next thing we are going to do is we are gonna add some flanger to it. And I think for this sound, this basic initial flanger preset is pretty damn good. But you can of course manipulate it more and play with it more, um, whatever. Right, so let's say this is like the basic sound, but let's crank it up some more with some post-processing. So what I did here with this sound is I added a drum bus, which I know sounds a bit illogical because this isn't really some percussion sound, it is more of a lead. But still, we need to crank up the transients of this one so they become much more articulated. And I found out that it's basically a great thing to just do it with drum bus. The drum bus itself will give it some extra drive from here. And I think this is all okay. But what we are going to do is we are gonna boost the transients a bit here. And now the sound will be much more sharper, which I want for this sound. You see the difference? This is much more sharper and much more articulated. And that's exactly what we need. So after this, I will add a compressor. And I will put a quite long attack time, let's say somewhere around 10 milliseconds. And this is also for the same purpose that we are going to get those first transients really, really sharp and articulated. So let's see that how that goes. You see it's going to yellow. I will just lower the volume here a bit. So we have more space because right now I'm gonna put some saturator just for color. Just it's it's really cool to put lots of different distortion drive type of stuff into your sound. So it will have this really penetrating color, I guess. So yeah, the thing I like about the saturator is sinoid fault, and I I don't think I will bugger with it anymore. Great, of course I will put on some EQ8 and I will cut the low end so it doesn't interfere with our bass. I will boost a high end a bit more. Yes, and I think this is pretty much it. Let's hear it. Yep, that's it. You saw it here first, folks. This is how you create this shit. So yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple, but pretty effective sound we got here. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I guess I'll see you soon. Or maybe not. Bye!